you guys. Hi, Hi. Gigi Vegan. <laughs> Hi. Today, we have such a big deal. It's our second guest of all time. I want to introduce him. He is the lead pastor in Mexico City at Mosaic. It is Emerson Nowatny. We are so oh, grateful to have you here. You. Thank you so much. Such an honor. Of course. So I wanted to tell a little backstory. So two years ago at Mosaic, I went in on a Sunday morning and I saw on the little Instagram that you were going to be speaking. Mm -hmm. I had never heard of you. I had never heard you speak. I went in there that day, not knowing what to expect. And it, your sermon, mm -hmm. your story, your testimony rocked my world. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we, I had never met you. Mm -hmm. I had never really seen you after that or anything. And that was a couple of years ago when we started Girls Gone Bible. I had told Ari from the very beginning, mm -hmm. there's this guy, Pastor Emerson. Mm -hmm. He is the heart of what we do. Wow. Because there are a lot of podcasts out there that are so beautiful, um, who have a lot of guests and hosts who have been in the church their whole lives. Yeah. Me and Ari <laughs> don't come from the church. <laughs> We kind of come like, from the street. Like, I need some convicts up in here. Where do you come from? <laughs> oh, we come, I don't know where it's, we come it's, from. It's been rough for us growing yeah. up. So we're not yeah. like, and, and so we always wanted people who've been through things mm. and who are going to be real and talk about drugs and yeah. jail and prison and like real, like spiritual yeah. warfare and things that they've gone through. And you are mm. the most beautiful redemption story mm. of all time. Thank you. So. Thank you. It's such an honor to be here. Uh, I've been listening to you guys. Heard Pastor Irwin on here and it was yeah. amazing and it's so good to be here. And uh, I resonate with you guys. You yeah. know, yeah. you guys say you're from the street. I'm from the street. <laughs> <laughs> goes, definitely from the street. Where are you guys from? <laughs> <laughs> People are going to hear us from the street and be like, all right, enough. We're going right. to get so much yeah. heat this, by the way. There are these two little girls. The, the street's from Albania and the street's of Boston. Yeah, yeah. kind of. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. No. We, um, but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, you know? yeah but, we just didn't grow up in the church yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And even when I... When I, when I heard your testimony, even when I, when I connected, I felt like you guys, when I finally connected to Jesus, I still yeah. didn't feel like I connected to church. Yeah. yeah. I didn't feel like I belonged uh, in a place like that. You know, yeah. even though I knew Jesus accepted me, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if people accepted me. Yeah. And so I I know what you, what you feel. Go. Oh, Can I, really quick. I'm sorry we're wearing the same outfit today. We didn't mean to. I just picked her up. I can't believe it. We have a problem. We have one brain. Yeah. Can I ask you, when did you finally feel safe in mm. the church? You know what? It it, it took a while. Yeah. I, I think um, I started to create my own spaces mm -hmm. where I would make people feel safe. And um, I was actually kicked out of a church that uh, where I started a, a, a place called Soul Jam where I used to just get a bunch of young people to come play music and, wow. and uh, play pool. I put a disco ball in the middle of the room, and I was in San Diego. I'm originally born and raised in San Diego. Yeah. And so we started that place, and it was – I never really felt accepted until I met um, Irwin. You know, mm. when I met Pastor Irwin, I felt like things changed, and I was like, oh, there's a guy – doing what I'm doing. He just knows how to back it up. Yeah. Because I would just get in arguments and that I couldn't win. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to uh, back up what I was trying yeah. to do, but I was just trying to reach my people, reach yeah. my friends. Uh, they didn't really want to go to the church I was going to. Mm -hmm. I came to faith in a Hispanic church, a small Hispanic church in San Diego, California. I'm, a, I'm Latino. Yeah. You know, I speak Spanish. Um, I went because of a girlfriend and we can tell that story yeah, later we're on. Gonna yeah, we're going to start from yeah. the very beginning. Yeah. There's so yeah. much. I love what you just said though about how you didn't feel accepted in the church but then you created your mm. own space. Yeah. I feel like the same thing happened with you and I where mm. we really didn't feel accepted mm. in the Christian community yeah. by other people until we started Girls Gone Bible and we made this space mm. where all the people who watch us who also don't feel accepted mm. by the church or don't feel like they fit, they come here and now we're accepted because they're accepted and mm. we've created a community where we accept each other. It's so a beautiful. beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking the other day, you know, even just Paul's life and mm -hmm. what he went through and yeah. and everything he had to endure. Yeah. And still found joy. Yeah. You know, inside of that. So. That's why, yeah, I love um, the book of Philippians because Paul wrote it from jail. Yeah. And that's when he says, I can do all things through Christ. Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. And I think that's been the three of us, our story and most people out yeah. there is that by our own strength, we sometimes can't do much yeah. because life is hard and there's a lot of darkness and there's a lot of things that we can only overcome through 
the strength yes. of Jesus and, and through having joy through Jesus. Yes. And not depending on yourself. Yeah. 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 I am. Um, okay. So let's start from the very beginning because yeah. your story is incredible. You grew up in a house that wasn't religious. No. Right? No. Okay. I'm first generation, born mm -hmm. in the States, you know, born in San Diego. And that's where I'm from. And do you have siblings? Yeah. One brother named Carlos and a sister named Sarah. Are they believers? Uh, they both are. Yeah. Beautiful. So yeah, the whole family has come to faith. Oh. It's been a beautiful thing. So the pillar of our faith is my grandma. Mm -hmm. So we, I didn't, I wasn't raised in the, in a, in the Christian home, mm -hmm. but I can remember like it was yesterday, just going to grandma's house and she had her music on, yeah. worship music on. She had her Bible open all the time. Like Love the Bible was like her pages were ripped, you know, and yeah. just all uh, highlighted. And I would say, Grandma, why do you why do you always read this book? Yeah. And she said, it's, mijo, it's, a, <laughs> it's alive. Yes. Wow. And I didn't know what she meant. I go, alive? And now I know. Because mm -hmm. yeah. she's like, mm -hmm. every time I read it, and she had read it seven, eight times over, you know, mm -hmm. in, in her life. And she said, it just always speaks to me differently. Yeah. And that's the power of the, of the word. A hundred percent. I love that. So, so yeah. Much. So she was a pillar. So, yeah. but uh, my, my home, home, uh, father and mother did, they, they didn't take us to church. We, we I didn't really know much, uh, but I knew grandma was connected. Yeah. And, and her prayers came beautiful. through eventually. Yeah. 100%. Right? Yeah. You can see her prayers and yeah. my testimony. Mm -hmm. So at what age did you find God? Yeah, let's, so, well, let's get you into it. Go what in? happened? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So at 17 years old, um, I thought I was Casanova, right? I was um, dating every girl, girl possible in high school. My identity was really based on relationship mm -hmm. and you know, uh, I'm a little good looking, you know, uh, <laughs> that's what my wife says. You know? uh, and, and so I had uh, this ability to um, just date and, mm -hmm. and think that was like w what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. My brother is super handsome, blue eyes, olive skin, you know, all American, just uh, played sports his whole life. So like that was my idol. Like mm -hmm. My brother was a, a womanizer. That's going to be me. And so through a girlfriend, I got invited to a church mm -hmm. and she didn't even want to go to the church. She, I was, I just called her one day and she's like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm going to church. I hate going, but my mom makes me go. And I just went to see if she was telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And I found Jesus. So I walked into this church. It had no lights. It had no, there was, the worship was off. Like yeah. the drummer was crazy it was like the worst <laughs> worst experience you could imagine yeah um just it had no ambiance like there was just nothing no mm -hmm. led screens but god's presence was so thick in that place mm -hmm. and so i got touched by god in that small church in san diego um and there was maybe 30 people in the room and it felt like a dentist's office like it was yeah. so bright you know like there was nothing cool about it but God's presence was so real. And I remember standing there and I felt God's hand on my back mm. and I just began to cry and nobody was touching me. Nobody was forcing me. I just fell to my knees and God's presence just surrounded me. I'm 17 years old. I had done every drug you can imagine, mm. nothing compared to his presence. And so I'm on my knees and when I get up, I start walking with Jesus. I never really even like officially said, I, I, rec it, I accept yeah. Jesus, I receive Jesus. I, something happened. Mm -hmm. I, I, it was just like uh, different. Mm -hmm. And so I started walking with, with Jesus, started walking with God. The, my girlfriend was mad because I was done. I was like, I, I, I don't want to date you no more. I just want to, I, I mean, something supernatural happened yeah. inside of yeah. me. And all of a sudden, I want to go to Bible school. Yeah. And, I want, I want to, wow. and then everyone was like, you want to go to Bible school? Like, what are you doing? You know, and my dad's like, are you going to be a priest? He had no idea what was That's happening so inside awesome. of me. That's so awesome. Yeah, yeah. So then I just, I fell in love with Jesus, forgot about not just that girlfriend, but I had a girlfriend in every high school. Because at that point, I had gotten kicked out of five high schools. I just kept get, getting out of, kicked out of high school because of drugs, mm -hmm. uh, ditching, mm -hmm. just, um, just, I was... You're a menace. Menace. And I was just looking for attention. At yeah. this point, my dad leaves. Uh, he abandoned our family and we were about 12 years old. Mm -hmm. So I was just looking for attention, looking for a father figure, looking for um, friends that would uh, accept me and mm -hmm. I would do things I shouldn't be doing. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I got caught smoking weed at school all the time, mm -hmm. ditching. 
Um, and then my brother started doing drugs. So then I would get them for my brothers. So it was really easy for me. And he was my idol. So when I met Jesus, I left everything. Right then and there, like you. Right then and there. It just the conviction was re- like it's just like you knew what to do. Super and- strong. Wow. Super strong. I had the same thing. I, yeah. I really understand. Yeah. It was like a, a hand on yeah. my back. You felt like it was a yes. comfort you can't explain. I went through this, that I had the same thing as you. Yes. You had a similar story too in the sense that all of a sudden one day, it's like nobody was telling you don't do this, don't do that. Because mm. she already had never had really guidance, like super strict moral yeah, guidance yeah, yeah. like that. And then all of a sudden one day she really met Jesus and was like, I have to change everything. Yeah. I have to give this up. I'm giving that up. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, and it, I was in a church, same as yeah. you, and everything changed from that yeah. day. And then it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And so they, my, the pastor, uh, uh, which is still my friend uh, in San Diego, he sat me down. He, he kind of helped me mm-hmm. with my walk and was saying, Hey, um, it's probably not that good that you have like so many girlfriends, you know, I'm like, Oh, it's good. You know, I'm all good. You know, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to no. do that no more. You know? And then he, I remember clearly he pulled my, he pulled my shirt and I, and, and I had hickeys. And I felt so bad and I started yeah. to cry and I said, I don't want to be this person. But no one told me not to be that person. I just felt like I was go- I was empty mm. and now I was filled with Jesus, but I still had these marks. Mm. You know, I still yeah. had this uh, recent past that this pastor was able to see. He didn't reject me. He didn't judge me. He just embraced me. Yes, yeah, so that's like my supernatural experience with God. I met him and I, I didn't know nothing about yeah. Jesus, didn't know nothing about the Bible. So I encountered God. It was amazing. Went to Bible school. Mm. How long was Bible school? Three years. Wow. Yeah. I went to uh, Horizon Bible Institute in San Diego and um, studied the word there. And I was just, you know, um, learning. I, I didn't never wanted to, I didn't want to study. And now I want to study the word of God, yeah. which was crazy, yeah. you know. Cause I'm like I, I'm not a read, I'm not a reader, you know. I uh, I was a jock, sports, mm-hmm. and um, and drugs and alcohol and partying. That was, <laughs> that was, that was my, my sport. that was my life. <laughs> and now I'm like reading, and then uh, so I'm in Bible school, and then uh, I, I I started this uh, place called Soul Jam that I was telling you guys, yeah. you guys about. Like, how do I bring friends closer to Jesus that don't want to go to church? Because even back then, I would say, Hey, come with me. And sometimes they would visit and they would just say, hey, it's just strange. Mm-hmm. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, it was a Hispanic church. It got a little emotional. You know, <laughs> <laughs> people were crying a lot. It was my friends were like, our favorite That's time my favorite. church. <laughs> <laughs> so, really my, is. so my friends were like, why, why, why is that lady crying? You know, and so they didn't really get it. So we started this cafe and it was before cafes were like yeah. a thing in churches. Yeah. And I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so... Nobody knew what I was doing. So people didn't know how to take it. Mm-hmm. So we did this place and people were coming to Jesus. I would literally get up and speak. I don't know what I said. It's like the Holy Spirit was in with it, you, within yeah, you. It's crazy. because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure I said bad things. I was, I probably said things that weren't theologically correct. Uh, yeah. Right? And that may, maybe that's not even bad. It's just wasn't, uh, I didn't know. I just yeah. was so hungry. And so... Uh, when I would get up there and speak, people would re- people were like they received Jesus and things yeah. were happening and yeah. like more people were coming to the cafe. So I I fall in love in that coffee shop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this beautiful woman, uh, beautiful girl, she would stay late and clean and like help us like serve because it was still a nonprofit. It wasn't mm-hmm. a church. It was more of a cafe connected to this nonprofit that was helping us and yeah. backing us up and. She was gorgeous. Like, you know, so pretty. Like, I couldn't go say hi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I would send, I, I send my friend over. Nice, and nice. And then he found out that she thought I was cute too. So then we're like, oh, we should talk. I'm like 20 at this point, right? Okay. I took her to see the sunset at the beach when it was a sunrise. I was, it was a mistake. <laughs> The sun came from behind us. Oh, that's so <laughs> it was good. Terrible, terrible. <laughs> Didn't plan it right. Uh, I don't know where the sun comes out of. So, <laughs> she, um, we fell in love, and um, we 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 were dating, and it was a a, a beautiful courtship mm-hmm. because I had read every book that I was supposed to read mm-hmm. to respect her. Wow. Rachel Bumps. You know, I I had read everything to become the man of God. I was supposed to be. Yeah. And so I was doing everything right. We were we were definitely not having sex. We were definitely respecting each other. And she felt the same way. And so um about 
I remember like a year before everything went crazy, we sat down at a Denny's. Mm -hmm. And this is like a beautiful, I mean, beautiful, educated. She, We, we were just in love mm -hmm. for all the right reasons. Yeah. You know, it was it was pure. She knew I was going to Bible school. All right, I have a question. Did you know that traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? Yeah, it can lead to acne, allergies, and stuffy noses. It is just pretty gross. But we have a great solution because Miracle Made offers a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bedding such as sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that prevent 99% of bacteria and require three times less laundry. And they also use silver-infused fabrics inspired by NASA, and they're self-cooling to keep you at the perfect temperature all night. And they're self-cleaning because they're infused with silver that prevents up to 99.7% of bacterial growth. And Miracle Sheets are so luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxurious brands as they feel nicer than the five-star hotel sheets. And Miracle Sheets are designed for your skin. You guys, stop sleeping on bacteria. It's so bad for your skin. It clogs your pores. It leads to acne and breakouts. Okay, GGB gang, go to trymiracle.com slash GGB to try Miracle Sheets today. If you order today, you can save over 40%, and if you use promo code GGB at checkout, you'll get three towels and save an extra 20%. Miracle is so confident in their product. You have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. You're going to want to go to trymiracle.com slash GGB and use code GGB to claim your free three-piece towel set and save 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash GGB. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this video. I remember she, we sat down and she said, hey, I'm really sick. And I'm trying to give context to the story because uh, something happened in our relationship. And when she told me she was really sick, I don't know why, but my response was, can you have kids? Uh -huh. And I knew it broke her. I knew it, it was not the right question. Yeah. And uh, I knew it was a moment. It was an Emerson moment, not like godly Emerson moment, but I'm human, you know? So I'm young yes. and I ask her a question and she falls apart, starts crying and shuts down. Wow. A year later, her dad comes to my house. We had a house in San Diego. Um, I had I had bought a house and we we're trying to, we we're fixing it. And um, her dad comes and says, hey, can I talk to you? And I said, yeah, let's talk. So he sits down with me and he says, hey, Emerson, I just want to let you know that, um, that she's dying. You know, and I don't want to say her name out of respect, but she says, he says, she, she's dying. She's got cancer. And I said, there's no way she's got cancer because she looked perfect. Yeah. And so she got diagnosed with a really invasive cancer in her ovaries that had given her a polycystic ovary disease that led to um, just other complications. Mm -hmm. And so things had advanced. She had tried to tell me something years before, and I didn't know how to take it. Yeah. So now she's dying, and I was so full of faith, and I'm like, Hey, God's going to heal her. Yeah. There's no way she's going to die. Two weeks before my wedding, she got, she was, her body was so invaded with cancer, she died. So I lose my best friend. I lose the woman that I love. I lose everything I had worked for. And I'm like, God, why would this happen to me? Yeah. You know, it was so hard. It was so devastating. And I remember it felt like I was dying, yeah. you know, because I said, how, how can this happen to me? You know, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I read every book you told me to read. I'm, I'm respecting her and, and this happens and to her. And so I was trying to be there for her and I was trying to support the whole situation. She pushed me so far away from from her life and yeah. she said, hey, I don't, I don't I don't want you near me. You, you deserve better, you, you know, go live your life. And so we separated, you know, she passed away and, and it was devastating. Um, and so hard, I, I went to, it's, I was driving in San Diego, and I remember when it was cell phones had just come out, yeah. I think, or maybe I just got, I, I had just got it, but I had a cell phone, and my uncle calls me, and at the moment, my uncle, uh, my fam, a lot of my family have co had come to faith, and this uncle was like, had become the pillar in, in our family, so he yeah. calls me, not knowing anything, he says, hey, mijo, I just made some food, it was my favorite dish, and I didn't even care about the food i just needed someone to talk to yeah he lived by her house so i went to his house and i stayed about two weeks in his closet 
just dark closet, no food, no eating. I wanted to die. It was embarrassing. My family was here from South America. My family's here from Mexico to for the wedding. Everything gets canceled. And so for me, I had learned about a faith that if you follow Jesus, it's going to go awesome. I didn't really understand that if you follow Jesus, it might not go so awesome. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's going to go bad and we shouldn't speak of hey it's gonna go awesome or it's gonna go bad it's just life yeah you know and i didn't know how to take this life moment mm -hmm. and so thank god i didn't commit suicide thank god uh, i'm still here thank you Jesus. because i just thought this is it it's over for me you know um because I, I was also taught like there's that one right yeah, yeah there's a, a soulmate there's a soulmate mm -hmm. yeah. there's one and you're like i have to find her and in, in this space of seven billion people in this yeah, world yeah. and so that's when i found out i'm not sure if there's a one yeah i, I believe god can give us multiple futures uh -huh. and we choose and he's there uh -huh. you know yeah so that's what happened in that moment that led me uh to what happened next because nobody ends up in prison nobody wakes up and is homeless yeah, yeah. you know it's like you look at a homeless person you're like he didn't wake up there. Yeah. Something happened. And you hear the story uh, that there's um, something hard in their life that that we can look at and, and see. And so for me, this incident uh, made me upset at God. Yeah. It was I was upset at, at the church, at everybody. Um, and so I ran away so far from God, more further away you can, than you can imagine. And every time I would run... Like he was always there. <laughs> Everywhere I turned, he was always there. Every moment, he was always there. And so I had an incident where I was running and running and running. I mean, I was, we were moving drugs from San Diego to Seattle to New York to Chicago. Yeah, really quick. So, you, so first, I, we have no words. Obviously, mm -hmm. she, Ari's in tears. Like, <sighs> this is insane. Mm -hmm. Really quickly, so how did you, because you did get involved with the cartel, right? Yes. And you had family members, and how did that yes. come about? So, you know, it's like not in the movies where like a stranger comes and says, hey, you want to be a part of this? Yeah. It's always through a family member. Yeah. It's always through a close friend. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was family, unfortunately, you know, because yeah. I think anyone that offers you drugs, anyone that tells you to be part of any kind of cartel is not a friend. Yeah. I uh, should never do that, you yeah. know, because it's it's so harmful. Mm -hmm. And so for me, you know, sometimes family just doesn't know better. And yeah. so I got into this game through uncles from Tijuana that were working with, like, just very strong cartels and uh, avoid names uh, in Tijuana that were running San Diego. And uh, it was just a um, perfect moment for me to be embraced and accepted into that world. And so all my family mm -hmm. was like, we told you your dad, you, you, we told you that your God was fake. Like we told you that your God's not real. What was your grandmother saying? Was she? She passed away. She had yeah, passed she away. she had passed away. Okay, okay. But, but she got to see uh, Emerson at his best. Good, yes. good. When this incident happens to me and, and my fiance dies, it was so heartbreaking and so earth shattering and soul like breaking that I ran away so far. And so when I was running, I could keep hearing the voices say, saying your, your God was never real. And it became to, I became to accept that. Yeah. Maybe God wasn't real. You know, why am I doing all this for him? Why am I not, uh, uh, why am I abstinent now? Mm. Why, why, why am I not doing drugs? And then everything goes bad. And so it was really, um, really hard a really hard moment so then when i as i was running uh, from god it was three years of running wow. and so um in three years you could do a lot of damage, damage yeah i was you know we were moving drugs from san diego san diego's a, a it's a border town which has a lot of um drugs and cartels it's like um it's it's a springboard mm -hmm. where drugs uh, get pushed throughout the country. Yeah. And the further you push the drug, the more expensive it gets. A kilo of cocaine, uh, for your listeners to know, I'm just kidding. For the, <laughs> <laughs> a kilo of cocaine you know, in San Diego is going to be a lot cheaper yeah. than a kilo of cocaine in New York. Yeah. Because New York has no border. Yeah. And so we would push it 
as far as possible to make money. And at first, I was just dealing with money, right? Because mm-hmm. they trusted me. I was a nephew. Mm. I was a good person. They even knew I was like a, a Christian, yeah, right? Because yeah. I didn't do things that they did. Yeah, you're not going to cross anyone or do Yeah, anything and I still it. had some kind of value values, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. that, that were wrong, you know, yeah. but they were better, yeah. you know, and yeah. so they trusted me with money. And so I'm, I'm traveling and bringing back 600000 Eight hundred thousand dollars strapped to my body, like no we had. Way. We were we would strap our bodies with money, like lace it on with, a plane. On the plane because you can't fly with more than ten thousand dollars cash, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And back then they didn't have the security, so right? Before nine eleven, this? this is before nine eleven. Yeah, they didn't have any it, of that. It, it, it was it was it was there, but it wasn't as uh, heightened. No. no, yeah. So now any piece of metal, and I don't know if you guys knew, but money has metal. Yeah. So the strips of metal. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, you have to spread it. We'll go off. Yeah, you have yeah. to spread it around your body. So, we were just bringing back money, and I thought it's just money. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's okay, but it's never just money. No, <laughs> you it's know, not it's dirty money. It's dirty. It's it, it's connected to other stuff. Yeah, that it's gonna open other doors. Like always. Um, if it looks bad, just don't do it. Yeah. You know, like period. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, one day we flew back from New York. A, a friend of ours, a friend of ours, got caught bringing uh he had sixty thousand dollars on his body they took the money and released them so we thought well, he's fine you know like we kind of laughed it out yeah not knowing that who doesn't go back for sixty thousand mm-hmm. dollars like obviously dirty money right yeah because if it was yours you'd go back for ten dollars yeah because yeah. it's hard working money right and so we just didn't go back and that's kind of where investigation started and they started following us tracking us and so um uh, I just was running. I always felt nervous. I always felt like something was happening. And towards the end, the anxiety in mm. my life was just so bad. I knew better. Yeah. So one day I'm at the gym and I'm working out. Yeah. And I'm like, had a meeting with my uncle in the jacuzzi because make sure no one's wired. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> so Wait, that's so actually weird. a good yeah. idea. <laughs> no, that's what they do. That's, that's what, what they do in the cartel. That's yeah, so I'm good. Like, it's literally out of a movie. No one trusts nobody. You know? So I'm like in the jacuzzi with my uncle. <laughs> And we have a meeting. We're like, yeah, we're going to move this to Seattle. We're going to expand this enterprise. And so then I get out to get out the jacuzzi and I go work out. Mm-hmm. And I'm working out. And this young, uh, like a short guy. I always say short because he was so little. Yeah. But he was light skin and he was short. And he came up to me and he said, can I pray for you? And no. I'm like in the gym. And I'm like, either my mom sent him. <laughs> Or the DA sent him, you know, like I was so nervous. I, I so was awesome. so nervous. And I'm like, I'd rather my mom sent him, you know, yeah, like, because yeah. my mom now is a believer. So my mom comes to faith through my life. Wow. Some of my family comes to faith through my life. And just God started doing really beautiful things in my family. Mm-hmm. But now this tragedy that happened to me has led me so far from God. And I'm at, I'm at the gym and this this guy says, can I pray for you? And I said, no, Uh there's no way you're praying for me. And so he says, okay, you know, um, talk to you later. And he leaves. And so then I'm done with my routine. I'm leaving the gym and I hear my name. No. Emerson. And I'm like, I turn around and I said, I never told him my name. So I'm like, for sure now my mom sent him, you know, like, (laughs) (laughs) or he for sure is like DDA, you know. He walks up to me and says, hey, can I pray for you? So I'm thinking, like, he's definitely not DEA. You know, like, they're not praying for nobody. <laughs> so then he, I said, yes. Something inside of me says, I need prayer. Yeah. I'm so far from God. I haven't seen my mom. I haven't seen my family. I, I was hiding. I was so uh, just, um, plan- I was actually planning to leave the country and go to Bolivia and become my own guy. Wow. So there was all these things in my head that I was like, I'm just going to go like go big and, mm-hmm. and everything I do in life, I'm 100. Yeah. I'm a pastor now. Yeah. <laughs> Just everyone listening, I'm a pastor now. Calm down. <laughs> Don't judge me. But I go 100 at everything yeah. I do. And so I'm I'm 100 at this uh, and God and church and building what we're doing. And I was 100 uh, being bad. Yeah. yeah. And so I knew I needed prayer. And so we walked towards my car and because I didn't want to do it too public. Right. So I go to my car and he he's so short, he can't really even reach my shoulders to pray for me. So yeah. he kind of like grabs my stomach or my hands, I, like my short? shoulders. He was short. <laughs> so he says, guy. he says, 
he starts praying. He starts praying everything about my life. Wow. Stop. Everything Jesus. about my relationship with my mom, my, my the life I was living, uh, the anxiety I was dealing with. Uh, I was panicked because you live panic. You yeah. know, like when you live a lie, all you do is watch your back. So true. And so I couldn't ever be at peace. Yeah. I was always like nervous, you know. Yeah. And so he, I felt this peace I had never felt in so long. So I start to cry. And I'm thinking, I'm crying in the parking lot of LA Fitness in San Diego, <laughs> you know. So I fought on my knees. Wow. And just burst into this crazy uh, crying moment. And I opened my eyes and there's three people around me. Like I'm surrounded by three people. I don't share this a whole lot. We don't talk about um, you know, supernatural stuff, uh, a whole lot, uh, you know, and, but it's real. Yeah, it is. It happened to me. I had, I had an experience with Jesus yeah. that moment, like God showed up. I don't know if it was father, son, Holy spirit. I don't know <laughs> if it was Moses. I don't know who came down, but there was three people surrounding me. And I just, I, I, he stands me back up and it's one person and it's the little guy and he hugs me and he says, Emerson, you know exactly what you have to do. Yeah. Do it. And he leaves and I get in my car and I just told myself, I'm crying. Like, I'm, a, I'm like, I have to change. I have to stop this life. I have to connect with my family. I have to leave this. I yeah. know where this is heading. And in my head, another voice says, just one more time. And just, the enemy is real. Just one more time. Yeah. And it was so strong that one more time that I look back and I think, how can how could I not listen yeah. when I just had an encounter with God? I know. We do it all the time. Like Jesus just met me. Yeah. And I, I just like saw something supernatural. I don't even know what I saw. Yeah. So I get in my car and I said, okay, one more time. A week later, the DEA came knocking. It wasn't God anymore. It wasn't this experience. It was the DEA. So I got arrested with 7.6 kilos of cocaine. Yeah. One kilo of cocaine is 10 years in federal prison. And this I had is in San seven, Diego? San Diego. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is still in San Diego, California. And so I get arrested um, but 7.6 kilos. So I was I was facing 17 years. Wow. So in, in the feds, they have minimum and maximum mandatories yeah. that Ronald Reagan put into place. So basically they look at the amount of drugs you have and then they can um, look at your past mm -hmm. and then they can connect it like, like uh, just like doing math, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you're not even, you're a number now, yeah. you know? And, but luckily I had no priors because yeah. I met Jesus at, at such a young age uh, at 17, you know, which is pretty young, 17, 16 years old. I had done crazy stuff before that, but nothing like this. Yeah. I'd never been arrested. I don't even think I ever had like a tra traffic violation, wow. which helped because now I'm looking at just a drug conviction without a past. Yeah. Because what they try to do is build, a oh, this guy's crazy. Yeah. And so they didn't really have a case, but they, they had a lot of drugs. So I ended up doing, um, I got sentenced to five years in federal prison. Wow. So the 10 years, my minimum was 10. And I was able to apply for five because um, there's a, a law that if you have no past and you've you've been a good person, this can help you. Yeah. And so they looked at my case and, and I got five years in federal prison. Wow. And, the cra and it gets crazier. I know. But if you have any questions, no. ask uh, me. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> if you have any. No, I was just going to say, like, what, like, how was it in Princess? Did you meet him again there? And did he get you through that? 100%. Yeah. You know, people say like, oh, everyone meets Jesus in prison or everyone meets Jesus in hard times. Yeah. Man, everyone meets Jesus like when you hit rock bottom. Yeah. I don't care where you're at. Yeah. You know, I've never heard, um, I, I've, I've never uh, seen someone say like, oh, like this changed me. Like I've seen people say the power of Jesus changed me. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I left, I've had left alcoholism. I left drugs i left this i left that like that's the power of god yeah. you know there's no other there's no other name no. that does this you know Thank you. like you can say like 
hey, I'm an atheist, awesome. But I've never seen no atheism change an alcoholic. No. Thank you. You know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're really passionate about this. <laughs> Even though I have I have a lot of atheist friends. Yeah, yeah. And I respect them. Absolutely. You know? Agnostic atheists. And, and they know and they and they always ask, like, hey, I love the way you do community. I love that you're part of a community. Like that's what they miss. Yeah. You know? And so for me it's the power of Jesus that changed my life. And yeah. so that was my moment, you know? So when I went to prison, yeah, it's crazy. Like, can you just imagine like for a second, like all your privacy is gone. Yeah. And in federal prison, you they do an eight day evaluation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they see who you are. So mm -hmm. they don't put you, they don't put you right away with everybody just in case, like if you're, if, if you're like, if you're like a child rapist or, yeah. or you've done things that usually you get killed in prison. So they try to actually like, protect you how do they find I, out how do people in prison i've always wondered how do they find out what you did do, 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 word yes, of mouth because the prison is run by prisoners wow so the clerks are prisoners so anyone taking the information down Jesus. is an actual prisoner so the 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 guards are the, there to watch you and so everything else is run everything like plumbers electricians like guards don't do that yeah and a clerk people doing intake yeah uh, you you have an officer there but everyone doing like the hard work is an inmate yeah so they see wow and so they see the paperwork they they evaluated me so i went through an evaluation and the first day oh, i forgot about this so i'm sitting down in my bed in my jail cell i'd never been in the jail i'd never I been in, in trouble going through You're such so, a nice guy <laughs> it's like so so, I'm like, why didn't I listen to God in that car and, ride? Exactly. Yeah. So then I'm sitting in my jail cell and I'm bawling. Like, I mean, when I'm telling you like despair, yeah. I wanted to die. Like I, what I went through with my fiance was death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in prison going, can I take can I take more pain? I would disassociate. Like I would, I think I would fully like remove myself. Yeah, you can from, snap. Yeah. And that's I, what people, ha that's what do. it yeah. happens. Your brain snaps. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like people don't, they just, they don't end up crazy. Something can happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting there in my, in my jail cell on my bunk bed and I'm crying and I'm crying and I'm ashamed. Mm. And, I, and I, I'm literally crying out to God saying, I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I didn't listen. And I heard God's voice tell me, I never left you. And those words kept me alive for the next five years. I never left you. Emerson, you ran. Emerson, you hid. But I was always there. And there's nothing you can do that I'm not going to show up. I felt Jesus next to my bunk bed. So when I feel weak, I go back to the bunk bed and I say, Jesus, you never left me. And he never will. Mm -mm. He's the best. Jesus. <laughs> Dude, we are getting wrecked today. We're getting wrecked. We are. <laughs> look at Ari. <laughs> she can't. Is it, I'm losing my mind. It's unbelievable. That it's is, unbelievable. Yeah. So, yeah. So then, <laughs> sorry. Okay, can we talk? Okay, because before, because you met your yeah. stunning, beautiful yeah. wife, Christina. Yeah. My guy has his wife's mm, name on his chest. Always. This is go. like always. you guys are the one of the most yeah. beautiful couples I've ever Thank seen. Thank you. Um, so how did that happen? Because you met your wife before, and this yeah, is. So I met my wife a month before I went to prison. No way. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. So like my all my cousins in San Diego, you know, we're a big Latino family, so we're like. You know, my dude got in trouble. So I got in trouble, right? And and I went to jail. Yeah. And I, I couldn't get bail. And uh, I couldn't get out. I yeah. couldn't get out. couldn't get out. And my, my lawyer, um, she's amazing. Uh, she's it's, it's a woman and she's incredible. One of the best lawyers in San Diego. She says, hey, listen, you didn't steal a pack of gum. And this is not a marijuana case. It's cocaine. You're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to try to help you. So be patient. We're going to try to get you out because I keep hearing you're a good person. You made a mistake. Yeah. Ari, anybody who knows me probably has heard me sing the praises of pros and their truly custom made-to-order hair care. Switching to a custom routine from pros was one of the best things I have ever done for my hair. The results that I'm seeing just keep getting better and better. You guys know that we are big on hair. You guys, shampoo and conditioner can make or break your hair. Pros is incredible. 
It's a one of a kind made to order formula. It has made my hair shinier, smoother, softer, stronger, all of the above. I have got their shampoo, their conditioner, their hair oil, and their pre-shampoo hair mask. And I'm telling you guys, the difference in my hair is unlike anything I've ever used. I have truly gotten every hair product you could possibly find, and I do salon quality. I go for the most expensive because I think that's the best. But Pros, the difference in my hair, it has revitalized my hair. What I love about Pros is they ask you the questions that other made-to-order formulas won't. For example, they ask for your zip code because they want to know what environment you live in, what climate you live in. They'll ask you if you color your hair. What type of hair do you have, oily or dry? Do you have damage to your hair? Um, they even go as far to ask you if you exercise and what your eating habits are because that's how specific and customized they are. By analyzing over 85 personal factors, Pros handpicks clean, sustainable source ingredients that get you closer to your hair goals with every wash. Yeah, my favorite feature is Pros' review and refine tool, which lets me tweak my formulas for any reason in case I change up my address, my hair color, or even my diet. Like, for example, recently I went a little lighter with my hair, so I had to go into Pros and I had to go in and type in what the change was. Urban Neutral Certified B Corp, Pros is an industry leader in clean and responsible beauty. All their ingredients are sustainably sourced, ethically gathered, and cruelty-free. They're also the first custom beauty brand to go carbon neutral, which is really cool. And because we're so confident in them, if you're not 100% positive Pros is the best hair care you've had, they'll take back the products, no questions asked. Custom made-to-order hair care from Pros has your name all over it. Take your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off your first order today. Go to pros.com slash ggb. That's pros, pros com slash ggb for your free in-depth hair consultation and get 15% off. Thank you, Pros, for sponsoring this video. And so now I'm trying to tell that story to the judge. Judge doesn't want to hear it. You know, he's like, whatever, you're another number. Wow. But I was God's son, not just another number. You know, God, God had a plan for me. And so I'm waiting to get bail and I get denied all three times. The last time I fasted, I'm like, I'm fasting for this week. You know, yeah. I had nothing else to do in there. You know, I was like, there, yeah. there ain't no good food anyway. <laughs> so I'm like fasting. I'm like, you know, my relationship with Jesus was insane in prison. You know, just everything is taken away from you. It's just fo yeah. total focus, you know. And so I I'm I'm fasting, fasting, and I'm praying, and I go to my last court date just for bail. I'm not even trying to, I'm not even finding my case yet. So they said no. The judge. The third time? The third time. I said no mas. No, no, no. Um, I just spoke Spanish. No, no more. more. No more. Uh, uh, you, you, you can't... Um, you, you you don't qualify for bail. So my lawyer walks up to the, to the to the bench and talks to the lawyer, to the judge and says, hey, I don't know what they said. To this day, she comes back. She's like, we got it. So, and I'm like, oh Jesus. my gosh, miracle. So then she gets it and the judge says, okay, you got bail, $450,000. <laughs> what? Yeah, $450,000 bail. And you're going to come out with an ankle bracelet. Yeah. I got bail. I fought my case. And because I did so much good and with a bunch of friends, the, the, the judge says, hey, Em, we love you. Um, we really like you a lot. There's nothing it. else we could do for you. We're going to give you five years. So uh, getting to the story where I met my wife, yeah. I get five years and they say, hey, you want to self-surrender now? Well, you got one month to go free from the, I, it was a court. It was like a court date. I got sentenced. Yeah. And you're nervous, you know, I'm, like, I'm about to get sentenced in federal court. Yeah. yeah. Something that I was, if the judge goes crazy, she could go, you know what? Uh, she can give me whatever she if wants. If she's having a bad day, she yeah. can change everything. Yeah, yeah. She, she can change everything. So she gives me, she gives me five years, got sentenced five years. And, and that was a miracle. You know, I was, I, I was good with five, you know, in my mind, in my heart, I go, God, I can handle five. Yeah. You know, I'm still young. You know, I was How 20, 21. You? Wow. I was 21, yeah. You were only 21. 21 years old, yeah. So I got 20, I got, I got five years and he gave me a month to self surrender. So I'm like, I'll take the month. You yeah. Know? And uh, I had to self surrender myself to that place. But before, like a good Latino, they threw a party, you know? Yeah. So my friends threw a party at this <laughs> place in downtown. That's awesome. Um, we, we played music that day. And I see this beautiful, like curly hair girl dancing. And I'm like, 
she's super pretty, right? And I'm thinking, but I'm like, I can't talk to nobody. I'm about to go, yeah. you know? So then I saw her. She sees me. She's Latina. So she comes up to me, right? Let's go, Christina. Yeah, and she comes up to <laughs> me. But, but when she comes up to me, but she says she pulls my pant leg because I'm on stage. <laughs> and she says, it sounds terrible. And I look at her, I'm like, what? I love her. I love her. She says, she says so good. it sounds terrible because my friend Jeremy was like on one of the, the percussions and he had been drinking a little, so he wasn't right, you know, so it was off. Yeah. And so Christina says, hey, can you, um, you guys turn it down? <laughs> she wasn't trying to like hit on me or nothing, you know, That's but so I saw good. her yeah. and I said, my response was, do you want to dance? And she says, yeah, I want to dance. So I put her up on stage. And wow. it was like a stage slash like friends. Like we're all up there and we're hanging out. And um, it was like a, a, a incredible like Latin space uh, in downtown San Diego that, that uh, my friend owned. And, and we're, we're having a good time. And then um, we danced all night. <laughs> we danced all night. And she says, you tricked me because you don't want to dance no more. <laughs> I go, I'm a quarter German, that German side, man. I'm not a huge dancer, but she loves to dance. Uh, she's the most beautiful and most gorgeous person in the world. She's my miracle. She waited for me the whole time I was wow. in she prison. She waited. When he the told me. The whole time. I that, can't. Did, <laughs> when he told me yesterday, I literally got up to walk around. I was like, no, she waited for you. That must Crazy. have gone, honestly, that must have made it so much easier to be there knowing you had her. She's my angel. She held it down. No, she While held it down. You were I mean, that is like no, the most classic out. story. How often out. could you see her? Check this out. She, was, yeah. she wasn't even a believer. Really? Nothing. No mm -hmm. faith. Wow. It's good at her core. No, nothing. Yeah. Her, 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 she lived with her aunt in Encinitas and her aunt was completely atheist yeah and she was so far from anything religious yeah. yeah and so when she meets me uh we went so we, we 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 um i said can i get your number and she said no and when she said no i'm like i like this girl That's you me know? Too. <laughs> I I'm like like, her. but then i'm like now we talk about it she's like hey she tells me hey i didn't give you my number because i thought you weren't gonna call me and i'm like well, of course i'm gonna call you so but initially, I felt like she. So we exchanged numbers. Yeah, we exchanged numbers. Like here's here's our numbers because we we really were interested in wanting to talk. So I took her out the next day. Wow. Yeah, we, and I can't wait for you guys to meet her one day. She's amazing. Me too. She's a hero of my story. She's a hero of our family. She's the rock. She's amazing. Um, we've been married for 15 years. Beautiful. And, uh, Jesus. Uh, I didn't know how to keep a relationship for eight months. Wow. You know, I had no male figure, which we can talk about. Yeah. You know, I had no male figure on what is marriage, what is relationship, how yeah. do you date? Yeah. Yeah. I had no godly father. I mean, when I was 15 years old, my father brought me a prostitute no. to become a man. Wow. That's really normal in yeah. the culture. Yeah. And, yeah, and I true. sat with that prostitute and I said, tell them I did it. And I didn't do nothing. No way. Because I was so afraid. Yeah. But I was also my grandma's prayers. Yeah. Because I would have been yeah. distorted at 15 with this prostitute, which who knows what I would have happened yeah. to my soul. A hundred percent. You know? And so God. I sat with her and actually, like, we became friends. And I would go visit her. I was 15. I was in, such a good kid. I was in Bolivia. And I would go, I, was, I, I had like these moments in my youth where I would go live in South America yeah. for, with my dad. And I would come back and just, you know, broken family, yeah. you know, yeah. trying yeah. to figure it out. And so um, wow. I didn't have a father figure. So when people try to use that as an excuse, uh, we have a heavenly father. Yeah. And to me, uh, having people in my life like Pastor Irwin, his greatest gift to me is not that he's a great communicator. Yeah. His greatest gift is not that he's a an amazing leader. His greatest gift to me is that he's still married hmm. and that he's a great husband Yeah, and that he says, I'm going to be here for my children. Yeah, And he's the best dad. Yeah, He's the best pastor. He's the best friend for me, you yeah. know, like what I needed in my life. And so for me, it's like, oh, he could do it. I can do it. Yeah, And I'm going to break any spiritual curse upon my family so that, so that I can my children can see hey dad stayed absolutely you know because yeah. I got three boys 
And I want I want them to be the best husbands. Yeah. You know, but you have to you have to teach them. Yeah. So I wasn't taught, but my heavenly father is teaching me. Uh, mentors in my life are teaching me. I I'm always trying to become a better husband yeah. because my wife deserves it. Yeah. My, my my wife needs a godly man in her life. Guys, we are so excited for this one. You already know who it is. It's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit, farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients delivered right to your doorstep. A crazy schedule can make it easy to fall back into your dinner time recipe rut. With HelloFresh, you keep mealtime exciting with over 40 recipes to choose from every week. I love HelloFresh. They do all the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep pre-portioned and ready to cook, along with pictured step-by-step -step recipe cards. How much easier can it get? Okay, we all know HelloFresh takes the hassle out of mealtime, but did you know it can also save you money? HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. I've always been a big fan of meal kits, but I especially love HelloFresh because they're truly the number one in America. I mean, every ingredient that they have is so fresh. It's produced straight from the farm, and their recipes are so intricate and so... They're like five-star meals, but they're so easy to make. And I have experience over quarantine. I made HelloFresh for my family for months, and they loved it. And I loved being able to cook for them. But the good thing is that I never burned anything. I never accidentally disproportioned something. I don't know if I use that correctly, but the proportions are always correct from HelloFresh, and I am a huge fan. All right, guys, you're going to go to HelloFresh.com slash 50GGB and use code 50GGB for 50% 50 off and free shipping. Again, that was HelloFresh.com slash 50GGB for 50% 50 off, and you're going to get free shipping. Thanks again, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. So right before I leave, I go, hey, I'm going to prison. And she's like, there's no way you're going to prison. So I'm trying to tell her I, I messed up. But how do you tell someone in a month? Like, I'm trying to prove that I'm a good person. But then in such a short space, I got to say, I'm actually a next convict. <laughs> you know, like, how do you say that? And she says, you're crazy. So I'm trying to tell her that, that I went to prison and she doesn't believe me. <laughs> so I changed the story. And I said, well, I'm going to go visit my dad. So then when I left, I left to go visit my dad I didn't go to prison in her mind. So then I'm writing. So then I left. I, I left and she gave me a gift. She gave me a gift to open, like open each gift like once a week. Like wow. she, she gave me this gift. She's, she's like, I go, I don't know how long I'm leaving for. I'm going to go see my dad. I just made up the story. Yeah. Because I'm like, am I ever going to see her again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, is this over? I try to tell her I went, I'm going to prison, but she's like, you, you don't even cuss. Yeah. Because I, I didn't. You know, we always joke around because I didn't have tattoos before prison. Uh, yeah. And now I'm, I'm all tatted up. But she was <laughs> like, she, she's like, you you didn't even have tattoos. You know, you were a good. I'm like, why? Tat tattoos are bad. But um, <laughs> yeah, I have a they might represent. That. We'll talk later. <laughs> 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 so then I, um, I, I, um, I go to prison and she thinks I went to Bolivia. And this is like my sister. I, I can call home because you're only allowed to call where you're allowed to call. You can't yeah. just like sit there and call your, your boys. Yeah. You're, you have a, you have to approve numbers. Yeah. So my, my sister was approved. So I call my sister. She's like, Emerson, Christina keeps coming to the house every Tuesday and we love her. But w what, you, when are you going to tell her? And she I'm like, she didn't even know. And she's like so good with kids and she's such a good person. And she'd go there, drive an hour to see my family. You know, she's in Encinitas, they go to Chula Vista. And she's spending the whole day with them and they love her. And every Tuesday was like family dinner day in, in our house. And so everyone loves her. And then a couple of months pass, I, I would write, Chris, this is crazy. I'm ashamed, but we're going to go. We're <laughs> open today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would write Christina letters to my sister's house, she would take it out of the envelope, put it in another envelope, because anything that is written from prison yeah. has to say prison. Yeah. I can't, nothing can come out of like where I was uh, and not say like where it's from. They yeah. won't let it go out, you know, because you can't hide. And so my sister would take it out and she would put it in another, another envelope. And then one day my sister's like, she, I think she's here to stay. Like she's not oh. never leaving. And when are you going to tell her? So finally I said, hey, 
I can't have my sister keep lying to her, yeah, you know. So yeah. like a couple of months of that, and I called Christina and I said, "Hey, can you can you tell her I'm I'm calling on Sunday, and um, and have her be there?" So yeah. since she calls, I call I call my sister's house, and uh, she passes the phone to Christina, and I said, "Hey, I'm not in Bolivia, I'm actually in federal prison." Wow. And she says that her first thought was, "I'm going to marry your next convict." <laughs> That was her thought. <laughs> Look at that. I can't, can't that was it. her thought. This is a college That's educated, a writer, beautiful. Yeah. Like, she don't need me. That's yeah. a writer. Like, she does not need me to complete. No, yeah. nothing. Yeah. She's completed. She She's an incredible, powerful woman, you know? Yeah. Like, had a job, made w- w- good money, had her own apartment. Like, she was set. Yeah. And so this know. guy comes along, and, she, and then... She tells a story and she says there's something different about Emerson. And so that's why I always tell people, be careful who you judge. Yeah. Because people say, oh, you know, everyone in prison, you know, is trash. No. You'd be lucky that you didn't make it to prison. Exactly. Because you should be there too. Yeah. hundred you know, percent. How many 100%. times did you drive, drive drunk and you shouldn't have drunk? Exactly. How many yeah. times? You know, like, don't judge. Please. Truly, yep. It just didn't happen to us. Thank God it didn't happen to you. But there's God people that are... You. God spared you. But there's people that are good in there. I yeah. met doctors in there that made a mistake. Yeah. I, I met people that, hey, tax evasion, whatever, yeah. whatever. Like, they're just good people who made yeah. a mistake. And God can use that. And that's the story of Jesus, yeah. right? It's he real. uses us broken and our best stories come out of being authentic, yeah. you know? So Christina waited for me. Yeah. And then she became a believer so, while you were there, right? So, no, this is so... I am <laughs> so, it's the best. So then I'm trying to tell about Jesus, okay? So can you imagine this? Like, I'm in prison. So she'd come visit me. And I would say, hey, Christina, like, did you read my letter? She's like, yeah, I read it. She's like, did you read the last part? And every letter I would say, if you want to receive Jesus... Say this prayer. Wow. But she would ignore it. And then when she would come visit me, she would say, Stop asking me about that wow. part. I don't want Jesus. I want you. Mm-hmm. And so one day I said, You can't have me without Jesus. I'm in prison. What am I saying? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm about to break up with this girl and she's like my angel. Yeah. Cause we were best friends. It wasn't physical, we, it couldn't be physical. Our, our our dates, I couldn't even, t- I mean, our, our visits, I couldn't even touch her. Yeah. It was very limited, you know, but I could see her and we could talk and we could write. Yeah. Lots of writing. We became best friends through writing. Obviously, I already had kissed her. I already, you know, before I left, you know, like I, I knew, we knew that side and, and, and we were convinced, you know, of, of this love. But yeah. in prison, it was just not physical. You it was had just, to grow that connection. just had to grow that connection. The way that God intends for yes, us to. Yes, deeper, yeah. you yeah. know. So then she would say, can you stop asking me about that last paragraph? Because every single time I would say, say this prayer. I go, have you said it? She's like, I don't want to say it. Mm-hmm. Because she was so law abiding. Like yeah. my wife won't even cross the street yeah. in the wrong spot. Yeah, She's like, to the T does everything. She's the one on the Enneagram. I don't know if you know Enneagrams. Like no, she's like just super organized. Yeah. She's everything set, you know. So I um ended up uh being in, in we ended up being in his visit and I said, Hey, do you do you want to receive Jesus? And he says, No, don't don't ask me again. So I said, We need to break up. Wow. So I broke up with her. And so can you imagine like she leaves and she's crying and I'm crying and like we just can't be together. Because I knew that I didn't want to be with somebody that didn't have my same faith. You can't. I knew it was going to be trouble. Yeah. I knew it was going to be um, a headache. Yeah. You know, when people say, like, do you think it's a good idea? I go, I think it's a bad idea. Yeah. Why? Because it's going to be, you're, it's already hard. Yeah. Relationships are already hard. Yeah. You know? And so when you uh, make it harder, it's just going to be tough, you know? So, um we broke up. So obviously I called her right away because I'm like, this is crazy. I mean, a big mistake. I said, hey, can we keep talking about this? Can we figure this out? She's like, yes, I get it. You know, I just don't know. She wasn't where I was. My face, was, I I had I had these like encounters with God young, you know, yeah. and so I felt called to serve young. Like I had this other experience and I'm trying to rush her to something that yeah. she doesn't really know. Mm-hmm, and yeah. plus I'm in prison, you know? Yeah. My credibility is kind of, kind of low. <laughs> so, awesome. so, 
So then she comes back and she says, hey, um, she says, how are you so happy? You're in prison and you're happy. She says, I'm free and I'm so depressed and I'm so anxious and I'm, I get to leave these walls. I get to leave you and you're locked up and you're happy. And she said, I'll never forget. She says, you have a sparkle in your eye. And I said, man, if there's, an, if there's a moment, God, this is a moment. I said, the only reason I'm happy is because of Jesus. The only reason I have a sparkle in my eye, even though I'm in pain, even though this hurts, even though this is degrading, I have to go back from this visit and they're going to get me buck naked, you yeah. know, and, and I'm going to feel like an animal. But I'm happy yeah. mm -hmm. because nobody can cage my spirit. Yeah. You know? And she said, well, if that's Jesus, I want him. And we got on our knees in <laughs> federal prison. No, I can't. And we prayed. And so she's praying to accept Jesus. <laughs> Was it the salvation prayer? Yeah. We're she losing, does, our yeah. <laughs> We're losing our minds. So she does a salvation prayer. And she's like, I want Jesus in my heart. I go, that's the only thing I can explain. And, and I knew we needed that as a couple. We needed that foundation, that mission, like you guys talk about, you know, in, in your podcast about relationships and like, you, you gotta have a mission to where you're heading towards, yeah, you know, yeah. it doesn't mean you're perfect. It doesn't mean it's going to be awesome all the time. No, but something holds us true. And for me in our relationship, it's just been Jesus, yeah. you know? Well, this is what I think about when people say, can you, cause obviously God tells us we, t we can't be unequally mm -hmm. yoked in yeah. a relationship and yeah. especially in a marriage. And I always think that it's not even that, like, obviously nobody's below you if they're not a believer, yeah. but if you're not a believer and I am, yeah. We're simply not living in the same yeah. truth. Yeah. Like Jesus is my truth. He's the truth. So how can we be together when we have different truths? That's yeah. right. It's impossible. You yeah. know? Yeah. And it's just going to create um, problems that, yeah. that, you know, everything from like, how do we raise the kids? Yeah, exactly. Where do we go? I, I, I've I seen it. I've seen it. I, I, I counsel people through that. Yeah. You know? And so for me, it's like, it's the best to try to avoid that, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. Especially so on the spiritual side. Yeah. Because you're never going to, like, no matter how far away you get from God, there's always just going to be that um, foundation of, like, I, I just know something different. Yeah. You know? And I know yeah. I could be something better. Even though you might go far, you might not be living the way you're living. But on our first date, I wasn't really where I was supposed to be. Yeah. On our first date, I told Christina, Jesus is the most important thing in my life. Yeah. And she's like, I just met you at a nightclub. <laughs> She didn't say that out loud, <laughs> but, she, but she thought about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, because she tells me now, she's like, this this dude's telling. But you know what she said when I when I said Jesus is the most important in my life? She said that my value went up. Yeah. She's like, I saw you different. A hundred percent. Like I saw a man I wanted to be with. Yeah. Even though she didn't understand, she didn't, it took her a while to accept him. Yeah. Because her thing was like, I'm already good. And she is good. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard for people that are so good to say, why would I need Jesus? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Jesus is just for alcoholics. Jesus is just for like drug addicts or yeah. Jesus is just for prisoners. No, Jesus is for my wife. She's never done anything bad. But she still felt you know, empty. She felt empty. Yeah. yeah. I just, I have so much respect for somebody like Christina who, because it's almost like people who, for example, I am going to be four years sober next wow, congratulations. month. congratulations. Thank you. So I like, I went through a very, very, very painful, dark, scary time mm. that I was, that was my rock bottom. And the truth is I should have gone into a lot more trouble. Mm. I should have burned a lot more bridges, but God spared me mm. from a lot. But the internal battle that I was facing was bad enough for it. That was my rock bottom. Mm. Um, but that's what pushed me there. Somebody like Christina, who she doesn't really need a reason to, yeah. if she's great, life's good, yeah. she's fine. You know what I mean? So I have so much respect for someone who could put themselves out there and on mm. the line the way that she did to be like, I'm going to try this anyways. Yes. You know, she wasn't forced into it. I think that's a yes. really beautiful level yes. of faith. Yeah. Yeah. It took us, it took us, uh, it took us years, you know, yeah. and, and I wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. You know, I'm locked up. And so we were able to talk about it. And so I was patient with her, you know, yeah. I let her walk. Uh, her own, her own steps and uh, but moments where I uh, as as a man, you know, God also calls me to be a leader. Yeah, you know, and so it doesn't make her less. It doesn't no. make me more. 
just different responsibilities. And I think we need men to 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 lead to yeah. men to say, hey, this is where I want to go. And if the person says no, great, then yeah. it's a no. But we need to be men that say, hey, this is my faith. Like Jesus is important. I might not be perfect right now, but I know this is where I want to go. Mm-hmm. This is where I'm heading. Yeah. I had no idea I was going to be a pastor. I yeah. had no idea we were going to change. We are changing the face of Mexico. You are revolutionizing. It's, it's a revolution. Yeah. This, 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 this doesn't happen in Mexico. Mm. You know, and so Christina waited for me for about a total of three and a half years. So I got sentenced to five years and I was locked up for three and a half. So I got out on good time. Yeah. And um, we were uh, able to reconnect after three and a half years and and, and we got married. Um, you know, I said, there's nothing. People ask me all the time, like, how do you know? Right. That's probably yeah, like a huge yeah, question. Yeah, how do you, you know? know? How do you know? Like, and I'm just like, it's just something so unexplainable. Yeah. But when you know, yeah, you just know. Did you know right when you met her? I knew right when I met her. I knew this is this is the one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because not nobody else compared. Mm-hmm. Nothing else compared. Yeah. It was this is it. And now, um, I had other opportunities. I I had other stuff that, but nothing uh, was so powerful like this relationship yeah. you know and it wasn't because she waited for me it was because when i got out we, we we dated you know and we still had trouble and we broke up and we were trying to figure it out you know i'm trying to like reconnect with society right you yeah. know which is a whole nother a whole nother, i wish we had more time yeah. because i have so many questions about too. prison i have so much question yeah. about your mental health during that time oh, and goodness. about yeah all the I just have so many questions. <laughs> no, I, I want to um, know, as as a man of God, what are some things that you do mm, to keep your relationship yeah. God-centered yeah. and just strong? Yeah, no, that's a good question. And, you know, one time I was walking uh, at Costco with my I wife. I love Costco. Yeah, I love Costco. <laughs> right, when we moved to Mexico, um, it was really hard for her. You, you guys need to meet her. I can't she has wait. To share her story. <laughs> you Get guys said that here. at the same Go. time. She's wearing the same outfit <laughs> as me. <laughs> But she, um, she, she's such an incredible woman. But we were, uh, and it was so hard. Her journey in Mexico has yeah. been very hard. Yeah. Because um, men and women are different. You know, like I, I adapted different. Yeah. You know, I, in my mind, my makeup is <laughs> we're going to go, we're going to conquer, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. And thank God, like things went awesome. But yeah. it was so hard for her. And it was really. Um, she left her family she and left her friends everything, and everything. You know, right? so. Yeah. Our, our psychologist, because we go to a psychologist and we get counseling uh, and we are big believers in that, you know. Yeah. So he was just saying, hey, she's experiencing a death. Mm. Wow. Like she lost her country. Let her mourn. Yeah. Because I'm like, let's go. Like things are going awesome, babe. Like the church is growing. We have all kinds of friends. Like, And our, our, our counselor said, you guys are experiencing the weight of success. Wow. He said, everyone prepares for failure. Yeah. Nobody prepares for success. Mm-hmm. And you guys have no idea the weight that you're living. And wow. you you, you uh, assimilate a certain way and everything. And she's just like, doesn't know what to, what to do. Yeah. There was times when she would just stay in the room and cry. God. And I had to walk down and pretend things were okay. Yeah. And I had to walk down to, I, to 60 liters yeah. and tell them like, we're going to conquer the future. And I couldn't even conquer my relationship. Yeah. yeah. But I had to be patient. I had to walk with her. But we're at Costco one day and I say, hey, um, I need a man in my life. And she says, what? I go, I need a man. And she's like, don't say that too loud. You know? <laughs> I said, I just need a man in my life because I need a mentor. Yeah. And so to answer your question, men need mentors. Yes, thank you. Men need men in their lives to be real. Mm-hmm. I yeah. can't tell you how much I need my pastor in my life, yeah. how much I need my friend Mario yeah. in Mexico in my life that's older than me, how much I need Pastor Diego that's part of uh, our community, like men that go, hey, how are you? Yeah, so important. Are you, are you okay? Because you look you okay. you don't open up. Yeah, because I'm busy. Who do I talk to? Yeah. yeah. You know, so uh, I know how men can feel and, and maybe sometimes shut down yeah. or think, I, I got it together. Yeah. You don't got it together. Uh, so true. You you probably still have dad issues, right? You know something happened in your life, uh, and even if nothing happened, you just need a guy, and you need the boys. They so, need brotherhood. We talk yeah. about it all the time. I, so I, I would say mentor, like yeah. a strong yeah. mentor, like that's real. Yeah. Like people tell me all the time, like, 
wow, you got the best pastor. I'm like, Pastor Irwin is awesome, yeah. but he's strong. Yeah. Like, yeah. he lets me have it. I'm serious. Like, there was a season where he was like, hey, you know what? You're not traveling no more. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I was like, but this is fun. <laughs> and I, I was like the Latin American new pastor guy. Yeah. Like, you know, he, he, he I, I'm getting speaking engagements. I'm yeah. traveling. I'm, I'm going places. And he's like, nope. Wow. You know, wow. And, but that was so good because you know what he said? Be with your family. Yeah. yeah. When I call him, he doesn't want to hear numbers. He doesn't want to hear the growth. He's yeah. like, how's Christina? How are the boys? Yeah. And so I need that in my life. And I, I try to be that in people's lives. So yeah. I came to LA. I'm here visiting. Uh, I came out for the arena, you know, and so uh, I don't never row alone. Yeah. Everyone knows that about me. I'm actually staying at a friend's house and I feel so bad. Because he probably thought it was just me, but it's six of us. Oh, mm -hmm. that's hilarious. So, so, <laughs> it's hilarious, you know, because like M's, M's going to come with guys. Yeah. Because just to have people pour into me, I pour into others. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm trying to build these guys and spend time with these guys and tell them, like, this is what a man of God looks like. Yeah. You know, um, yes, there's just so much confusion and there's so much talk so these days of like, yeah, the man's not needed, the woman's this, the woman's oh. that. I'm like, wait, let's get back to the basics. We could go on about we this could, you know, for, for so long. And for me, I'm just like, we need to be men of character. Yes. We need to be men that know how to stay. Stay. Mm -hmm. I just you know? not stay in my head. You know, and that just plant a flag and say, hey, I'm going to be a father. I'm going to be a boyfriend. I'm going to be a husband. I'm going to be here. Yeah. And then when things get hard. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. And that to me, it's like these mentors are so important. The most important relationship in my life, obviously, is my connection to God. Yeah. Jesus. So Jesus, I want to reflect you. Jesus, I want to look like you. Mm -hmm. Jesus, let me be empathetic to you. How would you treat yeah. your wife? Yeah. Even though you weren't married. But now you're inside of me. And how do I treat Christina? Yeah. You know, I tell people, Christina's like, honey... Like, this is a whole other episode, you know, but she's like, you know, she's like, you don't look sexy with your tank top. <laughs> she says, you look sexy when you take the trash out. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, you look sexy when you pick up your... My girl Christina. When you pick up your shoes. Yeah. She's like, because that doesn't... Your tank top doesn't turn me on. Yeah. What turns me on is that you're a man that's serving his house. Yes. Mm -hmm. That you're a man that's... Uh, making his play, his home safe. Yeah. You know, that you're going to protect us. Yeah. Your body, she's like, it's okay. But she's <laughs> like, I just want to know that you're going to be a man of his word. Yes. You know? It's all we need. Give time to your children. You yeah. know, be there for your kids. And like, they, they only have a certain time, you know, and they're going to grow up. So. Yeah. That's that's what I would recommend, you know, and, and that's something I practice in my life is just being surrounded by men, godly men, um, be, and also be careful with the men that you surround yourself that are just not good for you. Exactly. It's because beautiful. that is so influential in it your is, life. It is. Where I'm like, on this trip, one of the guys that came, you know, he's, he's, he just had a son. Yeah. And we, were, we, we walked into a store and we both immediately went to the toy section. Wow. You know, because I'm like, oh, now I got my boy. Yeah. The, the other guys went to go see the golfing stuff, you know, and sports things. And I'm like with my boy, Sergio. And I'm like, I'm so glad, bro, you had a baby because now you get me. Yeah, I'm, yeah. In the, I'm in the toy section because I'm buying stuff for my kids. It's not yeah. about me no more. Yeah. It's about yeah. my children and my legacy yeah. and my descendants. Oh, God, I have so, so many people Jared today. Jared is waiting for us. I want to ask mm. you how to overcome. I just, there's so <laughs> much. Honestly, but, he freed, I know yeah. this freed so many, including so, myself, by the you way. Freed me Thank as well. you. Right. I mean, yeah, this story touched me in ways I can't even. It's beautiful, no, it's so beautiful testimony. Yeah. Wow. The way you come here and you do in your sermons and you go on stage mm. and you go and you pour, you pour your heart out on yeah. there. You don't just go up and preach and say the same rhetoric yeah, that yeah. everybody does. You yeah. put your heart yeah. into everything. You have Jesus all mm. over you and you yeah. are just such an incredible representation of what a godly man yeah. should be. God bless you. God bless your Thank family. You. Thank you for everyone that you help Thank in this you. world. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're such a blessing in this world. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing and how you're impacting. Thank I'm you. really inspired. Thank you, know? you so much. God bless it. you. Thank God you so much. You, Thank you. Guys, we hope you enjoy that 
Pastor as Emerson. Much as we did. <laughs> yeah, as at Mosaic. We love you guys so much. We love you so, so much. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Yeah. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace, 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 peace. peace. God bless you. We love you, you guys so much. God bless you.